In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at a new product by Schmincke, which is the liquid charcoal range. It's a new kind of product. It's halfway between a charcoal and watercolor. And it's basically charcoal, so burnt pits, burnt seeds of fruits that has been bound with gum arabic. So it should be a lot like watercolor rather than charcoal, but still retain the charcoal features. They come in three colors. We have the grape seed black, the cherry pit black, and the peach stone black. They come in these lovely, lovely boxes and they are big tubes. They come in 35 milliliter rather than the normal 15 milliliter. This is 15 milliliter tube just for comparison. It's more than double the amount and they are currently selling at Jackson's for £17.80 per 35 milliliter, which works out to be about 50 pence per milliliter so it's a very affordable way to get a large amount of charcoal type color onto your paper it is designed for doing that they recommend it for doing a lot of creating large backgrounds rather than using charcoal but i have tested these now and i would say that they're they're not quite charcoal, certainly with the tests I've done. But anyway, in this video, I am going to test these out in the main areas that you might be interested in, like how do they behave? Is it watercolor or is it charcoal? And so we're gonna put it through our normal test that we do on this channel. And let's see what they look like. All three of these liquid charcoals are classified as PBK8, just for reference. And I'm gonna show you what they look like on the tube so we have the grape seed black the cherry pit black and they feel just like normal watercolor when you squeeze them out and then we have the peach stone black so first step we have the grape seed black and they're very grainy, very granulating color. And you can see the granulation happening already. And this one is a more of a cooler neutral. It's it's a blue black kind of thing. And you'll see later that it's it will separate into two if you put it into lots of water. But yeah, it's like, it, the texture is like a grainy watercolor, I would say. And the cherry black is the same. It has that grainy texture that I hope is coming through in the video. And the cherry black is supposed to be the warm neutral. And then finally we have the peach black. which again is quite granulating. There's lots of particles in there. The charcoal particles are quite visible in the thing. Let us swatch these so that you can see them. This is the grape seed. This is the cherry pit. The cherry pit has more of a sumi ink feel to it. The black, the very dark color is very similar to the sumi ink, but it also has a lot more warmth than the sumi ink. And then the peach stone black. Hopefully you can see that this is the neutral one, this is the warm one, and this is the black one. Close up, this is the first one, the grape seed one. This is the cherry black one. And then this is the peach.
For this video, I have created some tests and I'm sure you'll be wondering, do they behave the same whether you paint it straight from the tube or from dry? So I've done that. I've tested these colors in both conditions. So the top row will be from wet. So just like using straight from the tube like this. And then the bottom half is from dry. So I palleted it out and then let it dry and then use the paints from there. There is a thing to note with palleting it out though. One thing I do want to say about drying these liquid charcoals on palettes is that I've layered, obviously, I've poured these paints out on my palette. This is a plastic palette and all three of them will come off really really easily so i would say that this isn't a ideal way of pouring your palette it's probably better to put it not in a foldable palette at least because if you just flip this then these pieces are going to go everywhere especially if you have all three and then you're not going to know which color is which so either go for open palette or maybe like a little dish that you put it on rather than a fold out palette. First test I did was obviously the gradation and that shows you the hue as well as how easy is it to control in terms of gradation. And we have the grapeseed black both here, the cherry pit black here and the peach stone black here. And you can see that this has a cool bluish tone as Shuminke says and then warm brownish tone for the cherry pink and then a neutral color for the peach stone black. And you can see blueness coming through here from about the mid tone. And you can also see that here as well. The blue in the grapeseed black is a little bit more separated than say like the warms of the cherry pit. And you'll see that later in the dispersion test a bit more. However, talking about gradation, I would say if you want to get full control of how your paints are gradating on the paper, then I would recommend painting it from dry. I had a much easier time controlling it, especially the peach stone black. The cherry pit was good in both wet and dry, but definitely the grapeseed and absolutely the peach stone black, it's much easier to do it from dry. So if that's what you're looking to do, then definitely maybe palette it out onto a little ceramic dish like this, let it dry and then use that rather than painting it straight from the tube. For lift and glaze, Schminke says on the website that if you want to be able to lift this liquid charcoal off your paper, it really depends on what kind of paper you use. They say that the smoother the paper, the easier it is going to be to lift. For reference, I have used a Bockingford cold press paper, so that's going to be quite textured and that's going to hold on to the paint a lot more. And as you can see, both from wet and from dry, by wet, I mean I painted it from wet straight out the tube paint. Then I let this dry. Then I came in to do the lift. And I don't mean wet as in I tried to lift it while the paint was wet. I would say they're pretty similar. The peach stone black was easier to lift from dry. But for cold pressed paper, which is as which as we know is quite rough, it is a lightly staining colour. Of course, I'm sure you'd be wondering, can we rub this out? Because no more charcoal, you can. You can just rub it out with either a kneadable eraser or just lift it with your finger. So we are going to do our swipe test. I'm just going to do it here just to see how much comes off. And a little bit does come off but you can barely notice it. So if you are using cold pressed paper, then you're not gonna be able to just easily lift it again. There are advantages and disadvantages to this. If you just take this as a watercolor paint that comes in large tubes and is of neutral colors, then this is great. You're not gonna have any difference in the material behavior to all your other watercolors. So if you wanna create a background using this paint, then go over it with another paint it's not going to come off the paper as much as a normal charcoal with normal charcoal. It would just lift up very easily. Whereas this, you can glaze on top and not have as much coming off the paper. 
The downside to this is, of course, if you use this as charcoal, then this behaves very, very differently to charcoal. And you're going to be like, why is this not coming off? And it will slowly come off. And you can see the mark here where some of that pigment has come off and gone onto this paper. But it's nothing like how a charcoal would lift. Charcoal lifts very easily. In terms of glazing, I would say it's medium. It's like a normal granulating color. They lift up relatively easily and therefore you are going to get outlines, but it's no more different than, as I said, a granulating color that lifts quite easily. Just for curiosity, I have also painted some swatches of very similar neutral colors and we have two swatches from Schmincke. Schmincke already has quite a lot of neutral so i want you to be able to see whether you already have these colors and whether these colors are different enough for you to invest in them or not and i also have holbein one and dana smith's one so let's start with the schminke one i would say that the schminke's paints gray which is the less bluey paints gray is quite similar to the peach stone black so you probably don't need it if you have that color then we have this which Again, the peach stone is quite similar to the hematite black in terms of mid-tone around here. The anthracite is very similar in mid-tone to the cherry pit black. However, these are at its mass tone, which means it doesn't get very dark. So if you like this, but you want the option to go darker, then maybe these two are a good option. So far from Schmincke, we probably, the closest one is the neutral grey and the mid-tone is very similar. But again, these colours, these are mass tone, it doesn't go as dark as that. So maybe that's something you're looking for, is an option to go darker, then these paints will be great. Then we have Daniel Smith's colours. I would say that the lamp black, or even the ivory black actually, is similar to cherry pit black. The lamp black is pretty similar in the mid-tone. So if you ha already have these colors, then you're probably going to be skipping these. So if you are planning to do like a large monochromatic painting and you don't have these colors already, then this is actually a quite economical way of getting those colors to you. In terms of Holbein, ivory black is very close to the cherry pit black. I would say the peach black you would think it's quite be similar to the peach stone black but the whole way one has a little bit of bluish undertone so it's very similar to the mid-tone of the grapeseed black and then lamp black is very similar to the peach stone black so if you have these you don't need to get these then we have the dispersion and also color mixes the most interesting thing about doing the dispersion test is with the grapeseed black, you can really see the blue separating away from the black. And if you want to have a detailed look at these scans and all the test sheets I create for this video, then you can head on over to patreon.com forward slash autocarno so that you can see the color separation. Grapeseed black is the only one that does this and you can really see the blue separating away from the black. So that might be something you, you need to consider if you're gonna be painting with a lot of water because, and you're expecting it to behave like charcoal because you're, it's not going to, and you're gonna have this sudden surprise of blue coming through, and that might not be something you want. The cherry pit black and the peach stone black, however, are more unified in the color and there's no big obvious separation. So if you want to use this as a charcoal medium, then these two are probably the better option. In terms of the color mixes, these are the colors I mixed each black with, just for reference. And the grapeseed black is slightly lower in tinting strength than say the peach stone black. I, I found that the peach stone black and the cherry pit black were a little bit more higher in tinting strength than the grapeseed black. What it mostly does with mixing with any colors, it mutes it down a little bit and dare I say, make it a little bit dirty color and then add that black granulation. That granulation comes through a lot when you mix it with other colors. I found that these liquid charcoals mixed really easily and really well with watercolors from Holbein, Daniel Smith and Schmincke. 
that I tested and that there were no difference in how they behaved in terms of mixing the colors. Finally, for reference, I created a layering glazing kind of test here where I glazed over four times here and then I layered in different ways and they glaze very very well. I used roughly the mid tone to a light tone for doing this. Everything worked pretty well except for this one. So my habit in doing layering like this is to go like this first to draw a neat line and then pull the paint down but because of that relatively easy to lift the paint was lifting so for here you can see that this right at the top is a lot lighter than even the first layer and that is something that you're going to have to watch out for you're going to need to do just one swipe of the paint for per layer rather than go back into that wet layer and fiddling with it because then you're going to have the paint lifting up again then I tried to do downward strokes like this, but clearly where the brush stroke overlapped, the paint again lifted. So you're going to have to be really careful about how you put that layer down if you want an even and large surface covered at the same time. However, when I do did little brush strokes like this, it glazed fine because you're not going back in really. And the same here. They were, that was four layers and it was great. And this was fine as well because I wasn't ever going back into the wet paint. So that is something to look out for when you're considering these paints. That's it for this video. I hope these tests were useful to you in terms of learning what these paints or liquid charcoal feels like. I would say in summary that they feel like watercolor, but very grainy and also quite heavily granulating. It's better to think of them as watercolors that have charcoal in them rather than a charcoal medium because these behave a lot closer to watercolor than charcoal. In this video, I just tried to cover the things that I could think of that you guys might be interested in. But if there are other tests that you want me to do with these paints, please do let me know in the comments down below. And if I get enough different tests to do, then I will make a second video reviewing these, doing those tests for you. If you are interested in getting these, I leave links down below to where you can find them. If this video has inspired you to purchase them, then please do use those links because that really, really helps the channel and it doesn't cost you guys anything extra. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this review and I will see you in the next video. Bye!